owned by the member during the pandemic situation and lockdown system we continued our interactive activities including discussions at interclub contest in web system and this is the first time we opened the webinar to all and we got responses which is beyond really beyond our expectation we promise you to present some other attractive webinars in coming days now it is over to rajdeep to start a fantastic session on his experience on a studio light portrait on which i think he is the real personality with a bouquet of knowledge and with the flag of a leader does the fist good evening everybody um i'm not sure if uh, everyone is uh, conversing in bengali uh, so i'll be conducting this session in mixed language sometimes maybe using english or hindi or bengali as well so if you uh, if you feel that there is an issue of understanding please do let uh, mr ashok samadhan know i'll just repeat that for you all right uh, i'll be switch on the switching off my camera i'll be sharing the screen with you so that we can discuss about the uh, indo like portraits and uh, again i'm uh, stressing on the um, word discussion see all of us here are uh, photographers and uh, some of the other you might have come across uh, different sessions or workshops or attended some lessons regarding portraiture or portraits now many of you might have some kind of uh, experience knowledge as well so what i'm going to do from my end is we are going to uh, discuss the basic of indoor lights different light options that we have and i'm going to show you some images done by me and uh, again after that if you have any questions i'll uh, try to answer those and if uh, time does not permit please forward those to ashok da again and uh, definitely i'll get back to you all right uh, a, a small information about me uh, of course my name is rajdeep biswas i have completed diploma in photography and uh, i have a uh, few photographic distinctions as well uh, by profession i am uh, i am into business management and my specialization is human resources and in photography I, i consider myself as a photography enthusiast and my area of specialization is artificial light and my in, uh, areas of interest are indoor portraiture and fine art too okay so uh, before we start discussing about portraits uh let me uh, share a few uh, thoughts that i always do he every individual uh, which each and every individual in this world are unique now each and every individual have some specific characteristics or personality or attitude or unique mannerisms which make them unique now as a as an artist who uh, uh capture portrait it's your uh, i mean it's your will or wish or objective that you should try to emphasize that special trait in a person so let me read what is written in here and let me explain again portrait is a work of art of course we are not in the documentary photography here we are in the fine art or a good portrait will always contain at least one element that reveals the subject's personality attitude unique mannerisms or any of the other features or traits that form the individual's nature or the person actually in a nutshell the last line it will tell us something about the subject all right as uh, we all have access to the world wide web or the internet or the search engines that we have now it's full of information regarding different genres of photography you need to understand that as an individual photographer you need to have uh, your own thoughts into your portraits what you want to portray if it's an objective portrait or is it a subjective portrait and all these things and while uh, doing or while uh, doing portraiture in indoors you should keep in mind the lighting techniques the pose angle etc 
and please remember there is no formula for this with each and every individual subject your light position your pose angle of click everything is going to change so remember it's what you wish to show the entire world you need to click it that way okay now indoor light before i go into artificial light let me just uh, give you this show you this diagram on the uh, extreme left it is something of a reflector i would say anything like a reflector in the middle you would see outline of a person on the right hand you would see a window and on the extreme right hand side image you would see a person sitting and two windows on either side please note that one of the windows which is uh, the window on the left is wall inside now i sh uh, sh uh, after i sh uh, showing this diagram let me just come into the explanations now indoor portrait doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have um, you know artificial light you can always create indoor portraits by using window light and with the help of a reflector the images that i showed are just a representation of how you uh, you can do it just remember that what if you want to do portraits in indoor with natural light coming in from the windows it's not possible for everyone everyone to have uh, windows on either side of the room it's just a perfect example that i have cited but is just a guideline that what you can do I have written it window light is both soft and moderately directional producing a good modeling in a room with a single window the lighting is so one sided that it creates deep shadows so if i go to the second image you see light is coming from the window on the right so a portion of uh, the figure would be uh, highlighted and the opposite end would have dark shadows you can understand that the main light is on the left hand side of the subject or the right hand side of the photographer and to counter the shadows uh, which is formed by the obstruction of the subject we have another window on the left hand side which is again uh, daylight now all these these two uh, sources of light we create an atmosphere which you can use to create indoor portraits without the use of artificial light okay now i am coming into artificial light the artificial light is always as you know if you have had any uh, experience with this is always under photographer's control an important point to be kept in mind while setting up portrait lighting is that there should be one dominant main light all the other lights are being subordinate or subservient to it let me explain what i just read if you are using uh, two lights or three lights three point lighting the one light you need to uh, identify which one which one is your main light that is going to be your main light and the other one or two lights are going to be just supporting the main light the positioning of the main light source is most important factor within our control the angle the direction and the distance at which the main light is positioned has a profound influence on the modeling and overall effect see it's it's quite natural if you have a subject sitting in a room and um, you take an artificial light source just put it in front of the subject and you turn it on now what what you're going to see is a flat light falling on your subject just try to visualize the uh, atmosphere put a light you turn it on and you see the subject completely flat there is no shadows or the shadows which are there which are uh, not going to be uh, within your frame and all those things now slowly uh, imagine that you are moving the light maybe on your right or on your left let me take an example of when you are moving the light to your left as a photographer to your right as a photographer and so 
Now, once you are moving the light, what you would actually see, observe, is slowly there is a, there is a shadow which is coming. There is a, a presence of light as well as shadow. The more you move the light on the right, the harsh harsher the shadows become. Now, you stop at a certain after moving uh, to a certain limit, you stop. And then what you do is you raise the light vertically. Then what, what changes will you notice? It's quite simple. Notice the shadow of nose or, uh, you know, uh, the shadows beneath the lower lip, all these things. So why I'm saying you all these things is you need to visualize the effects of the light before you finalize what you want. If you have already in your mind what you want and you have the subject, you set the light according to that subject, it's fine. Otherwise, first visualize, then, then go ahead and set your light. Remember while positioning the main light, one should see the catch light in the eyes as much as practical. Remember, catch light cannot be visible always. You can, obviously, during processing, you may uh, do uh, certain things which uh, might get you uh, catch light in the eyes of the subject. But trust me, if if you are sending the images uh, for any uh, you know contest or anything, and uh, once the judges are conversing with this topic, they are gonna get it. Reflected light has the softest and broadest quality of all and is obtained by turning the lights on to a matte white reflecting surface instead of directly on the signal. Now, this is what this is the practice that I follow. I have, say, you know, the subject is sitting, I have one key light on the right hand side or on my right hand side, and uh, the wash light, which I use from the left hand side. If I'm using a light, I'm not. Getting, uh, hitting the subject straight away with the light. Rather, what I do is I flip the light, let it hit a reflector, and the and the reflected light goes to the subject. Now, why I do that? Anyways, you might have the might have a question in your, on your mind that if the light is already diffused, why I'm doing this? To further diffuse the light, to further have a subtle difference between the highlight and the shadow portion. Now it is uh, the soft light as we always uh, as we generally refer to which actually suits women and children because uh, it, it produces as I said uh, a while ago soft shadows. Okay now we are coming into positions of uh, while placing lights. Now while placing the main light one should observe that the quality of light which is influenced by the light's distance from the subject. Now what does this mean? Let's read the second line. Watch from the camera position the formation of highlights on the forehead, bridge of nose, brows, upper parts of the cheeks and chin to determine the distance of the light from the face. Now why this is important? If the light is too near, you will uh, you, you will get uh, output of uh, places with burned out or, or low gradation of tones. If you are, if the light is placed too far, then it will be a flat, weak loop. Now, remember, friends, it's not that that you, you click an image and then you go to your post-processing and uh, you do whatever things you do and you finish an image. Well, of course, if you are, um, if you are an editor, um, it's fine, but remember that we are photographers. So our aim should always be to have an in-camera excellence as far as practicable. So remember, placing of lights, just take a, a test shot, see the tones, see the highlights, see the shadows, then set your light according to that, and then proceed with your shoot. Remember, for every phase, there is a point which gives the best, best result, sheen and texture of the skin. Now, this is the line 
which again emphasizes the fact that I told you that there is no formula for artificial light setup that you're going to apply for all subjects. It's not possible. Now, if we have a strong full of character male subject, it's logical to emphasize his character and this demands a low key lighting. Okay. There is one new term, low key light. I'm going to come to that. The pictures full of shadow or darkness have a greater tendency to create emotional effects than those lighting compositions, which consists predominantly of light and subtle mid tones, the high key images. Obviously, when we see an image with light and shade, uh, I mean, what should I say? Play of light and shade. Uh, it gives us a sense of, uh, you know, um, what should I say? Some kind of emotions. However, when we see a, a high key image, we just see a beautiful image. That's it. That's the difference. Now, low key lighting is most effective with dark background and dark skin subject with rugged features. Again, this is an indicative statement that I have made. Doesn't matter. It doesn't mean rather. Doesn't mean that you cannot have a um, low key low light. Low key lighting setup for a fair subject. You can obviously do that. And as we discussed a while ago regarding women and children, um, if you go for high key effect, you would see, say, for example, we take an example of a blonde girl wearing light tone clothing. Blonde girl with a light tone clothing, you generally would not associate. Uh, much of a light, much of a shadow, darkness uh, with it. Rather, you would go with softer tones, soft colors, combination of colors, all these things. So it's important. It's not only about the light. It's about your subject, about what the subject is wearing, what is the skin tone of the subject. All these things matter when you are setting your If you are going to capture a child, now it is not possible for a child to follow all your instructions like an adult, do, adult can do. So what's best for you is to have a lighting with the least amount of shadows so that the, the child is able to move free and you are able to concentrate more on capturing the movements rather than waiting or directing the child to do what you want. Okay. Let's go to the next point. As per general perception, highlights on forehead, nose, cheeks, and chin seem to emphasize these lightest areas of the face, while the parts of the face and neck in the shadows to recede. This tends to create a three dimensional telling effect. The best form rendering of a three dimensional object is achieved by a lighting, which meets the light line of camera vision at an angle between 45 and 90. Now, what does it mean? A while ago, if you remember, I discussed. Once you try to move the source of light on the right or on the left, and then vertically up or vertically down, you would see change of shadows on the subject. And the light, uh, the highlights are mostly observed on the on the uh, on the forehead, the nose, the cheeks, and the chin. So remember to uh, look for the highlights in those areas. Okay. Now let us come to the fill light. The sole function of fill light is to illuminate the shadows. Remember, it is not for anything else but to illuminate the shadows or give relief to the shadows. If you are using two lights, remember the second light is just to give relief to the shadows unless again unless and until you are uh, working on flat light the filling light is diffused and placed closer to the camera at lens level and on the side of the lens opposite to that of the main light of course the main light is on the right hand side of the photographer the filling light is on the left hand side of the photographer now, the last line is very important. The distance between the fill-in and the subject is adjusted, adjusted to bring out the effect and 
contrast desire. Say, I'm taking uh, an arbitrary example with you. On the right hand side, your uh, the key light you have is set to power eight, and the light is placed uh, approximately say four feet from your subject. Now, on the left hand side, you have a fill in light. There are many ways that you can use that uh, light to illuminate the shadows. Number one, you can keep the fill in light in eight as well, and then increase the distance of the light from the subject. Now, remember, the distance of the light source from the subject, you are increasing that distance. Or if you want to keep it in the same distance as your main light is, simply uh, decrease the power of the fill light to say three or four, just the half. Now what happens is the main light is hitting your subject with the power of eight and creating shadows. Your uh, fill in light is hitting the subject with the power of four. Now what it's doing is it's relieving the shadows and giving you details in that. Now, how much detail you need, how much contrast you desire, is that you can control with your fill-in line. Okay. Now, with all the discussion, we definitely want to uh, do contrast. Now, we often uh, hear the word, it's more of contrast. Uh, the image demands less contrast. Now, co what is contrast? Definitely, you all have must have an idea about the contrast, but nonetheless, let me just read the paragraph. Contrast is different in the amount of light. The main light falls on the highlight of the face, and the amount of light falls on the shadow side of the face. Just what I told you a while ago. Now, remember, human eye have a wide range of, range of contrast. However, even if you consider film or digital sensors, it has a capacity, a certain capacity to you know capture the stones. So again, it's very important. Uh, I mean, based on your camera, maybe your full frame, it's a or it's a medium format or a crop sensor, whatever you're using, it's very important to understand to click a test image and understand till what level of contrast your camera is able to handle. Based on that, you have to keep that in mind as well when you are setting your light. Why I'm saying you this? Say you are uh, setting light um, uh, for uh, uh, details which may be captured by a full frame camera sensor. However, prop uh, sensor may not be able to capture the same details. That is the reason it's very important to understand your camera and its limits so that you can set the light based on that. Okay, lights. It's just basically two forms. One is continuous and another is flash. Just a few names that have uh, given here. Tungsten incandescent. It's actually generally the household lamps or you know theater lighting or car headlights and uh, simply those. The fluorescent the CFLS, as the name suggests, these are daylight balance lights, LEDs which we use in these days. And last one is uh, the HMI. Now HMI are very big, produce a lot of heat. And the lighting is continuous and it's very tough. I've, I've worked with it, it's very tough to move that light. So these are types of continuous lights, artificial lights. Now, flash. Well, uh, most of the cameras uh, we use do have a pop of flash. Uh, mainly, all the, if I'm not mistaken, all the uh, crop sensor cam uh, models do have that. Most of the uh, full frames do not have that. However, photography flash is nothing more than a brief, intense flash of light used by photographers to illuminate a subject. Of course, why are you using uh, external light source to illuminate your subject? It's normally synchronized so that it 
fires during a brief period of time when the camera shutter is open. As you remember, the front and the, and the back. Now, when the shutter is pressed, the flash needs to be synchronized in such a way that when the flash is synchronized, the entire shutter is open. Otherwise, you might, might experience uh, grading black either on the left hand side of the uh, image or on the right hand side or on the top or on at the bottom based on your camera. Okay, as we are discussing, different types of flash. One, of course, it's on camera flash dedicated to the camera, focusing the camera even in the dark, setting themselves to cameras, ISO settings, calculating the exposure and adjusting power output accordingly. Studio flash units have more power and could be used with modifiers. Now, studio flash. For those who are not conversant with working in studio environment, there are basically two types, generally. One is generator, also known as pack and head, basically consists of a box that sits on the floor. A cable connects to the box to the actual flash unit. So the power source is basically uh, a box and uh, the light is separate and the second one is mono block what we generally see in, in a studio environment uh, it's everything contained uh, contained in the head let me show you the images on the left hand side you would see a generator and on the right hand side you would see a mono light now generator lights are generally used when uh, you are going outdoors and you do not have a source of electricity. You can use this. And generally, what we use in um, studio environment are the mono lights. Okay. These are the different components of a studio flash head. One is flash tube, the round one, which is actually your light, which flashes. The modeling lamp, which actually is used. To show the effect light is going to uh, give you, and last but not the least, and very important, the cooling fan. Because with continuous use, uh, the heat is generated and cooling fan is required to downgrade the heat. Okay. Now, generally, these are the things which we find in um, in a studio environment: flash transmitter, soft boxes or diffusers, reflectors, barn door, honeycomb grid. Beauty dish, snoot, umbrella. Now this is this list is not exhaustive. Exhaustive. There are many other if you, uh, there are many other things which you can use. On the extreme left top, you see a soft box, and then you see um, a reflector, and then after that you see a snoot. After that you see a burn door. Coming to the bottom, ex extremely on the left, you see honeycomb, and then you see umbrella, and last. IR transmitter which you place on your camera. Okay, enough of light, and then now we come to a very important thing, which is makeup. Now, uh, friends, please remember that makeup, what makeup, to what extent is required that as a photographer, as an artist, you need to visualize and then you need to direct that to your makeup artist, or if you are doing it yourself. You need to keep certain things on your mind. Now, the aim of Beckham in a nutshell, again, all the discussions are based for our final photography, not for commercial photography or anything else. Now, why we use makeup is to accentuate the eyes, the bone structure, and the mouth. Balance the face by shading. Hair and eye color must blend with the makeup. Obviously, if you have a certain makeup, uh, put on on your subject and you have a different uh, hair color or eye color that doesn't add up okay now we are slowly beginning to go into uh, the do's and don'ts of indoor portraiture now posing is very important for you to communicate or talk to your subject See, there are two kinds of portraits uh, on, a, on, a, on a broader sense that you can have. One is an objective portrait that you you have certain objective and you're going to get it done through your subject. 
in that case you need to communicate what you want how you want and uh, what kind of uh, expressions or um, eye expression or facial expression whatever you want you tell that to the subject another one of course is to tell the subject be yourself you give give expressions according to your will and wish i'll just capture those then it becomes a subjective portrait these are two broad aspects that i have discussed there are many other uh, things to discuss in portrait but by going to all of those it becomes very lengthy and many of you would actually leave the meeting i would say all right remember that posing all poses cannot be done by all the subjects certain poses may be very difficult or he or she might not be comfortable so you need to communicate that as well if your subject is not comfortable with the pose you're suggesting please remember you're not going to get a very good output out of it it's very important or rather it's, it's of utmost importance that the subject is comfortable okay if your subject is shorter in height or if the chair is tall try to provide a support for her leg or his legs so that they get a support and they don't exhaust okay again if after all these if if you feel that uh, you are not able to capture what you were looking for might as well you go ahead and uh, sit in the model's chair and show the model or show the subject what you want we have done everybody who practice indoor portraiture we have done this on various occasions now everything done everything in place once you are prepared to click your shutter then you need to concentrate which moment to click remember please remember if you miss a moment if you want to or if you try to recreate that when well, you may be able to do that trust me you will never get the same moment you might get something much better or you might get something which you do not want to capture however the moment once it is gone it's gone you need to concentrate and identify the moment when the pose expression everything is perfect according to what you want okay some hardcore discussions which we can always refer to our internet search engines however internet is uh, has a plethora of information so let me just cut it down to the basic these are the, the different light schemes that um, we encourage you to know because why am i saying you this is you can only break the rule once you know the rule so look it like a scholar break it like an artist that's what i say okay first one is rembrandt lighting second is loop third is butterfly then split then broad light short light tail light criminal light and top light okay i'm going to show you each of these lights with an image so that you are able to understand it in a much better way again before i uh, start with rimbro let me tell you again it's not always uh, that uh, you will get rimbro effect placing the light at the same place at the same um, height for all subjects that you need to adjust according to your subjects always remember that please okay how would you identify its rimbron basically it is characterized by a small triangular highlight on the shadowed cheek of the subject shadowed cheek highlight a triangle on the shadowed cheek of the subject it is more of a masculine lighting and used commonly with a weak field light to accentuate the shadow side highlight okay it is actually a very popular technique for studio portraits generally achieved by single light at 45 degree to the camera and 45 in vertical towards the subject 
While applying rim row effects, photographers use reflector opposite to the light, supposed to minimize harshness of shadow. Fill in light may also serve you the same purpose. On the right hand side, you might see a graphical representation since it's 2D. It's not possible to show you what the effect is. However, I do have an image from which you can identify. If you see this image, see this uh, triangular highlighted portion on the shadowed part of the cheek. Now that's what we refer to, or that is the identification of rainbow light. This is the highlight part as it's quite evident from this image that light and key light was on the left hand side of the subject at an elevated position why elevated position because the shadow of the nose is falling on the right and the right side cheek of the subject and it's meeting with the shadow of the cheek and it's creating a triangle now that is the identification of raindrop and for this particular image, I used a fill-in light just to give a relief to the shadows. Loop. Loop lighting is characterized by a small shadow of the subject's nose on the cheek. It is suggested not to let the shadow touch the upper lip. I miss the upper lip, the, uh, the word upper. Now, why it is generally used, it is actually used generally to straighten a crooked nose and it has a slimming effect on the face. Then, look light. Main light is moved towards the side of the subject and above eye level to a certain shadow under the nose. Just a while back, we were discussing about rim rock. Just like that, the shadow of the nose. However, for Rembrandt, the shadow falls on the cheek. Now I'm going to just move the light a bit closer so that the shadow comes below the nose. It looks like an inverted D or, or like a little U. However, you need to keep in mind that the U does not touch the upper lip of the subject. Okay. Again, you may use reflector or, or uh, fill in light as per your wish to soften the shadows. If you see this, See the U or, uh, or, or U under the nose. This is the characteristics of loop light. Now next is butterfly or paramount light, which is, this is a very famous or what should I say, very popular uh, light scheme which photographers generally use because most of the portraits that we come across are female portraits. Now, why the name butterfly is, because it's actually characterized by the butterfly-shaped shadow that is cast below the nose. Again, remember, very important, one point to remember that the shadow of the nose never touched the upper lip of the subject. Oh, I didn't miss the upper, in, upper one in here. Oh, good. The butterfly pattern can be quite useful for a variety of faces, but it is at best on lean subjects with high and pronounced cheekbones. This type of lighting is traditionally feminine lighting pattern that produces symmetrical butterfly-like shadow beneath the subject's nose. And as well as that, it tends to emphasize high cheekbones. It is uh, generally not used for men because uh, it tends to hollow the cheeks and uh, the eye sockets are, you know, inside. So it's generally not used. For men. Again, for paramount light, if you want uh, a soft paramount light, I would always see, uh, always uh, advise use of a reflector. You know, just the subject may be holding a reflector in here, or you place the reflector like this, pointing towards the light, because the light is generally placed above the subject. Why? It's coming from here, and then it's created the shadow of those. Now, it's a single light source and it creates harsh shadows. So you place a uh, uh, reflector down and the shadows are relieved. Okay, let's see. And this uh, butterfly light is also known as paramount light since this was used by paramount pictures in the movies. Okay. And if you see the image, just beneath the nose, you will see a butterfly light structure. And also the cheek 
cheekbones are the contour of the cheekbones are quite prominent in here now uh, in this image particularly in this image i used the uh, reflector but um, in very uh, you know so that the light is not the shadows are not relieved to that much so that's why you see, uh, see harsh shadows just uh, beneath the uh, on the neck just beneath the nose and all these things okay now let me come to split it's as the name suggests split light splits space of the subject in halves of illuminated and shadow areas then often it's equal actually it emphasizes facial texture now why uh, we use split light is it, it's used to narrow white face i mean if i'm i i ask the photographer to click my image i would always uh, mostly use uh, short light or split light okay nonetheless it can also be used with weak field to hide facial imperfections split light can be used with or without fill light for dramatic effect here it is it's actually uh, dividing the subject's face mostly in in a half and you, as you can see that one half of the face is illuminated the other half of the face is um, in shadows and again another fill light was used from the right of the subject to give relief to the shadows okay now moving to broad light now this lighting arrangement of the subject's face related to the camera position generally this kind of light is used for subjects whose face are you know not broad to be it, it gives uh, your face a broad effect you know and um, in broad day, uh, yeah and yeah you can use broad light with i mean the dream broad speed or look all these three different light schemes can be used for uh, as broad light how i'm going to show you if you see this now the main identification of broad light remember if you see the subject this image the highlighted portion as in the the uh, the key light is on the left of the photographer or or to the right of the subject now it's hitting the subject and the highlighted portion as you can see it is pointing towards my camera and the shadow portion is visible to the camera but the directly what the camera sees is the nearest eye is the highlighted portion this is the identification of broad light as you can see you can use it with uh, i mean with uh, rembrandt light scheme or uh, you know loop or split whatever you wish or just the opposite if you want to uh, cut down a face with a person with uh, with a huge face if you want to cut it down if you want to show give an impression that it's narrow and if you want to uh, with bold highlights and all these things short light is for you See the same subject in this image again please notice that the camera lens is pointing towards the shadow portion of, portion of the face in this case the the key light is on the right of the photographer and the camera is pointing towards the shadow part of the face excuse me so these are the two uh, these are the differences between broad and short light broad light is used to sh uh, sh show broadness of a narrow face generally short light is just the opposite okay these are light schemes which we generally do not come across however since uh, we are discussing indoor lights it's obvious that i'm going to discuss this as well in case of criminal light the main light is the, the key light is the only light source and it's actually first time i'm saying it's actually the bottom of the subject towards the bottom of the subject if, if i'm the subject the light has to be in here it's hitting me from below that's how it is if the subject looks towards the camera say i'm looking to the camera towards the camera it produces a unique light and shadow details used to portray something evil generally if you uh, try to imagine uh, the yesteryear's movies on black and white 
uh, you would see, or you might imagine, or you might remember that the devils or the evil people, uh, evil uh, characters were uh, portrayed using criminal light. Now, in case of top light, the main and the only source of light is placed at the top of the subject, pointing towards the subject, simply in here. It's pointing towards the subject, just top of the subject. Why I'm saying all these things? I'll come to the images and then you would understand. Okay. The rim or hair light is used for model with dark or black hair place the light high so it splits, uh, splits the top of the head as well as separating the sides of the hair from the dark background. This is the use of hair or rim light. You might not understand much with this but you will understand with this. As you can see, the light is placed below the subject and uh, the identifications of criminal light is you just observe the shadow of the nose and that of the eyes. Definitely it's not portraying an evil character with this lovely lady. However, generally criminal light is used to portray evil. Okay, top light is just placing the main source, main light above the subject. You can see you can use top light to your effect just give, to give texture or shine to the hair. However, remember if you if you're using top light, it creates this kind of abrupt highlight on the nose. So, if you are using top light for um, to uh, highlight the subjects here. Do remember to use cutter along with your light source so that light does not spill on subject's nose. I don't know whether this is visible properly or not. However, hair light or rim light that we use, these are these are basically it, it creates a difference from the uh, background. This image was taken with black background and with hair light. I can see a uh, definite contour of the entire head because I use the hairline. Now remember, in digital photography, while using any kind of light, please, again I would request you, please remember not to have highlight blown areas. It is unacceptable. Like in films, we used to have uh, shadowless areas unacceptable for digital, it's highlight capped areas. So, when you're using hair light, remember to use it in, to such an effect that it does not burn out hair, so it produces a halo, which actually uh, is very uh, obstructing to look at. I mean, your subject is in front. If you're using much accentuated light with highlights all over, it tends to divert my attention. So you may, what you can do is you can use a snoot from a distance, or if if you're using uh, if you're using softbox, just place it behind the subject at the ground, pointing towards the head of the subject at an angle, at a very low power, so that you just get the outline. Now these are pretty important. All these are coming from uh, the experience that I have had uh, with all these years working with artificial light. You, you might have, or I would say, you must have come across images where you see a portion of the nose is highlighted. Now that's, I would, let me tell you, that is mostly in, in 99 cases out of 100, it's an issue with the light. It's not mastery of light. It's actually created by highlighted spots are created in nose. It's actually, it's actually due to leak light. Now, why this happens is model uh, moved her face or his face to a certain angle and the light licked and highlighted the nose. Now, again, if you're using kicker light or dimension light or contour light from, uh, from a certain angle, again, there is a possibility that if the subject is moving uh, his or her face, then you might get this issue. Remember, you should not have this in your portraits. It's one of the negative aspects of your portraits to have lick light falling on your on subject's nose. So 
Okay. Uh, again, I have used one more uh, term in here while shooting semi-profile portraits. Okay, what is, what is semi-profile portraits? Uh, if you remember, we used to have coins till 1980s with uh, one side of the face visible on, on the coin. And other part of the face is not visible. Now that is profile portrait. One side of the face is visible. That is profile portrait. What is semi-profile? Entire one side of the face is visible and some part of the uh, other part of the face is visible. That is semi-profile portrait. Now while we are trying to, while we try to capture semi-profile portraits, I have often come across when, uh, say for example, I'm turning like this, the, uh, the outline of the face is cutting to the eyes, I, 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 I of the subject. Now again, please remember to avoid this. This is again one negative aspect of uh, portraiture. Just, just move along. I mean, you may just ask the subject to move the face a bit towards you, or you may uh, position yourself on the left or the right just to, you know, get rid of this issue. Please remember these these things are not generally found on the internet. These are points that matter. While your subject is looking towards a certain direction, again, I have come across, or not me, many of the photographers have come across portraits. Well, it's, it's a fantastic portrait otherwise. Light-wise, pose-wise, everything is fantastic. Suddenly, what I notice is uh, the subject is looking extremely on the right. Or you see me on the left, just observe my eyes. Oh, you cannot see me because I've turned off my camera. Anyways, just remember that extremely the eyeballs are extreme on the right side or on extremely on the left hand side. So what it does is the, the camera exposes the white portion of the eyes mostly. I mean the white portion of the both the eyes are straight to the camera. It doesn't look good, my friends. So try to avoid that. Tell your subject, instead of looking extremely on the left, just to adjust the vision a bit on the right. And there you have it. Let me read it for you. While your subject is looking towards a particular direction, sometimes we see that major part of the white portion of the eyes are visible, mainly due to the angle at which the subject <laughs> is looking this is the angle at which the photographer is standing. A slight movement of the eyeballs could not only help you to overcome the situation, but also change the overall appeal of the portrait. Why the overall appeal? Just try to visualize. You have a fantastic portrait with fantastic tones, fantastic colors, fantastic texture. Suddenly, uh, you see uh, the subject looking out of the frame. Extremely on the right hand side or on the left hand side, that's the vision of the, uh, the subject. So it's actually driving my own vision out of the frame. It's not keeping me in the frame. So the overall appeal of the portrait is downgraded. Use of hands again. Remember, it, it is again one point which I've seen. Many people goofed, goofing up with this. When you are asking your subject to portrait, you know, remember that hands are just, you know, just a way to guide your vision or the or the or the um, vision of of the viewer towards the subject's face or the expression. It's not to be used in such a way that it, uh, you know, it uh, disrupts the balance of the image. Many a times I've seen. Uh, subjects, uh, photo, uh, photos, wherein the subject is uh, holding um, her hand in such a way it seems like uh, she's punching her own face. Just try to visualize that holding like this, it, it, it doesn't look good, my friends. So just if you're using or if you're asking your subject to use her hand or his hand, try to use it in such a way that it does not disturb the balance of your image. While using the hand, remember the palm of hand is highly reflective. 
please try to avoid the light hitting open palm. Just ask the subject to bend the hands inside, bend the hand inside so that the palm of the hand is not visible to, a, to the sensor. Otherwise, it creates a highlighted spot and it diverts your attention from the subject. Again, friends, these points people do not discuss. These points you may not find in the internet. So please keep these points on your mind. One more thing. Yesterday's year is not anymore. Today we are living in, in, in an era where there's a certain term that we always come across, which is called environmental portrait. It, it's, I mean, see, generally people associate environmental portrait with, uh, with uh, where the environment is visible, uh, mountainscapes and everything. Now, why not studio? Studio is also an environment. I mean, you're, you're spending money, you're setting up and all these things. You're clicking an image of, of the subjects of the subject. So as well, you should have part of the background or rather the detail of the background retained. Friends, if you go into portraiture, if you if you want to specialize in portraiture, remember, if you have a detailed lace background, completely darkened, completely whitened, doesn't give, doesn't show that you're a master. It only portrays, mostly portrays that you do not have control of light. Remember, when you're using artificial light, in my shoots personally, I, would, I use lights as a, a separate light just to have detail of the background. Remember, this is very important. And uh, one more thing, why it's again important for people who, uh, who are into uh, montage or creative photography is it gives you a separation, it gives you the separation of the subject from the, excuse me, from the background so that you can have an ease of cutting out the subject. Okay, the two features which outwardly seem to control expression are the eyes and the mouth, of course. The eyes, as they say, are the mirror of uh, one's character or inner personality. Usually, it is better to have eyes looking in the direction towards which the head is turned. Of course, if the subject's head is turned on the right-hand side and she's looking on the left-hand side, it doesn't make much sense or it doesn't look, doesn't look good as it with only the slightest departure from a normal level. So if your subject is looking on the right, I hope her expression, her eyes are also looking towards the right side, not the other way. Just remember that while you are using indoor light, the eye sockets should be well illuminated and there should be catch light in the eyes as far as practicable. For all light schemes, it's not possible. As far as practicable, try to have catch light in the uh, eyeball of the eyes of the subject. And uh, while while you are capturing portraits, if you see that your subject is you know giving you stares or giving you a blank stare, just ask the subject to close the eyes for a few seconds, give her her or him a glass of water, wait for a few seconds, and then ask her or him to again. Resume the session and open the eyes. Okay, now let's come to the mouth. The mouth is very mobile, expressive feature capable of conveying the whole range of feelings. Hands can be expressive and communicative as the face and can form an interesting and revealing part of an image. The hands play a crucial role by their position in relation to the subject, give balance to the composition. Friends, what I discussed just a while ago, it's just giving balance to your composition. So do not rather avoid using hands in such a way that it, you know, disbalances your image. And if you see that uh, the hand is uh, creating much highlight, you can always use a scarf or a handbag or spectacles or book or anything like that uh, in the hand just to, you know, Divert that attention. Okay. Every human face has certain peculiarities of feature. However, while making a pictorial portrait, 
one can make use of this even very ordinary features have some angles that are more pleasing than others emphasize them trust me friends each one of us have a certain angle at which we look the best to make the best of what is in front of the camera slight adjustment of head and camera has its effect on the features how a long nose now i'm going to read this just try to visualize if needed close your eyes and visualize a long nose a person with a long low nose looks longer if the head is tilted down you're pointing camera to a person with long nose okay and the head is tilted down the nose looks long a short nose looks shorter if the head is raised so remember this small adjustments do wonders to your portraits a broad nose looks broader if taken fully in front take the subject straight looking at your camera you click an image with a subject with broad nose it looks broader turning up and sideways and putting part of it in shadow seemingly reduces its width avoid having the tip of the nose coincide with the contour of the cheek or project only slightly beyond it just remember what we, what i discussed a while ago regarding uh, the the outline of the face cutting the eye similarly if your subject is uh, creating an angle for you to click remember the nose should not be cut with the outline of the face okay heads up for head up shoulders portrait keep optical axis of the lens at the height of the subject's lip and tip of nose in simple terms if you are using a head and a shoulder portrait place your camera in such a way that it's in alignment with the nose or the tip, tip of the nose or the lip of the subject now by placing a camera slightly lower level of the eyes of the subject apparently as to the height and dignity of the subject dignity is just an added term but it gives you a, an impression of height of the subject now, if you raise the camera above the center huh, and then what if you raise your camera above the center of the face to help elongate the nose narrow the chin reduce the fullness of jaw what it means is if a uh, if a person have a uh, um what should i say a heavier chip what you do is you raise the camera to a upper point so that the cheeks look narrower this is a small adjustment try to visualize it's not there for you to read it's for you to understand and visualize if needed close your eyes and try to visualize একজন মানুষ যার মানে চিপস খুব হেভি রেজিং দ্য ক্যামেরা লেভেল চিপ বা তার গালগুলো খুব শর্ট মনে হয় ইটস অ্যাকচুয়ালি ওয়ে দ্যাট উই ডু ইট রিডিউস দ্য ফুলনেস অফ দ্য জজ আর ব্রড ইন দ্য ফোর হেড লাইক ওয়াইজ আমি যদি ইফ আই লোয়ারিং ডাউন মাই ক্যামেরা দ্য নোজ লুকস শর্ট okay the height of the forehead and the width of the forehead is reduced when we use this so for example if a subject whose hair level is um, you, his or her um, forehead is big so what we do is we lower down the camera level so that uh, the hair uh, the the view point uh, so that we get a view point so that the forehead is smaller again it seems small it is not actually smaller these are small adjustments which you need to do according to your subjects <coughs> okay long neck requires a high view point to make it appear shorter hair again if you have heavy cheeks if you have a subject with heavy cheeks do one thing ask her to comb the hair and put it in front what you are doing is basically you are cutting the cheeks with hair is a small tits and bits which will help you get an image which you want okay what happened then okay here yeah. now i'm coming to coming to processing so this is an area regarding which i come across where is almost 3 days a week from different individuals 
I'm going to repeat what I say to each one of them. Friends, each image demands your complete attention and each and every image is unique. That, that you click is, uh, is unique. Maybe you're clicking an image, uh, different images of the same subject. However, there are fine differences between, e between each image, between those images. Now, there is no hard and fast formula for this. You need to first identify what processing is required to enhance your image. Friends, please remember, processing is required. What we do is to enhance the already clicked image. It is not a different thing that you are doing to the image. It's an integral part of imaging. So once you have visualized or pre-visualized what you want to do with your image, you need to finalize which tools you want to use to achieve this output. There are many tools available which you can use to process your images. However, please, I'm repeating, please try to pre-visualize what you want to do with your image and then finalize the tools and just use them one by one as you want. Remember that editing has to stop. I, I'm going to stress on this. It has to stop at a certain point. Once you go beyond that point, friends, you start ruining your image. Now, many might come across how to identify. I'm afraid this kind of identification of this point comes with experience and with your own perception. Many of you may like harsh contrast. Many of us may like uh, a balanced contrast. Many of you may like, you know, rich colors. Many of them may like subtle colors. So it's entirely up to you what you want to do with your image. These are my contact details for you to get in touch with. You see that? Yeah. Okay, these are few images. I have also kept one image uh, after uh, increasing its sharpness just to show you how it looks when the sharpness is increased maximum. And this is again a conceptual uh, fine art portrait. And uh, this one, if you look at this portrait, if you look at the face of the portrait, I have specifically increased the sharpness of the face. And I'm using a pretty big monitor right now. It's around 27 inches. Trust me, friends, the face looks full of freckles since I've increased the sharpness. Otherwise, if you consider this as a good portrait, just increasing the sharpness, it actually destroyed the portrait. If you uh, want to know about light schemes or setups of uh, any uh, portrait, just let me know. This is, again, one, uh, one image from the same uh, shoot. If, if you see, I have used hair light. Okay, however, you can see details of each and every hair. It's not that the hairs are blown out. This is very important, friends. Okay, and one more negative aspect of this image, let me tell you, is her open mouth with where I can see teeth, uh, her teeth. Now, this is generally regarded as one of, again, a negative aspect of an image. However, I've kept this image just to show you with a strong expression how an image can be destroyed if a subject has just slightly opened her, opened her mouth and the teeth, teeth are visible. It looks like a rabbit. So I'll, I have discarded this image actually. With this image, with this image I did not, but with this image I did. With this image I did. Because the, if you if you look at the if you if you uh, notice the look of this image, the expression of this image is kind of a uh, intriguing, surprising look. It's not that a subject would be properly you know prepared to by closing her mouth and everything and all these things. However, generally, if you have open mouth with teeth visible, it's considered as one of the negative aspects of portrait. Again. I'm showing you uh, portraits of, of, of this subject specifically because 
have this issue with this particular subject of her opening her mouth mostly and by doing that i have lost many images which otherwise would have been much better if you look at this image see the mouth is closed the catch light are there uh, i'll i'll give you a heads up regarding this image i'll just stop for a moment this image received the second award for uh, the second second award for uh, all over the world a portrait contest was done by psa it this image received the second award now i asked uh, i sent a request to the chairman of this uh, competition asking about details why i got the second position and why not first and it's not a complaint but i want to know the feedback of the uh, jury panel if at all possible because i'm not here to question jury decision because i always deem jury decision is final and i accept that trust me i had many lines i don't remember how many lines exactly written back to me you know what they wrote i remember the the road that there was a tug of war between the the image which which was which uh, was at uh, judge the first and this image only one fine point why this image became second was the position of catch light see the position of catch light in the subject's eyeballs that is the fine point on which this image came down to second rather than being first image so friends again i'm saying and if you look at this image one more point is if you are using hands you can use such type of uh, cloth to cover the hand so that it doesn't have excessive highlights now this image again this is a semi profile portrait as we are discussing if you see and that is it was the competition does it yeah this yeah this was a psa uh, portrait competition and it became second so uh, how deeply they see a photograph even a catch light yes, the position yes, of the catch they, light they, uh, this yes. they see an image in such a way that each and every aspect of an image trust me uh, while i'm stopping in this image let me tell you there they uh, i see among photographers that there is a tendency of using um, elliptical marker tool with high feather and then selecting the face highlighting the face so that the face is more highlighted than the other part of the body friends it doesn't look natural if you have an image where there is considerable difference between the skin tones it doesn't look natural please remember that okay this is a semi profile portrait if you see the side of this face it's not actually cutting the eyes if if uh, rather than the, this from this position if i just move slightly towards my left the outline of the face would have cut the eye of the subject the left eye of the subject so that would have been a disaster for me see hand is used in this portrait as well however it is used in such uh, two questions came on the on the previous image yes shelly mollik asked but isn't the cash light at 11 o'clock position and ramnath banerji asked sir why is the problem with the cash light can you please explain Again, first of all i would like to thank ramnath banerji because exactly that was my question reply to uh, the people that what is the problem with cash light because it is supposed to be the national cash light it is supposed to be the uh, cash light which was naturally because of the light then the reply came you just needed to pull down the light a bit down just to get a good light or you would have moved the light surface to a certain distance so that the cash light comes certainly towards the i mean a bit towards the center of the eyeballs and coming to the first one it is neither 11 nor 1 if you consider the face straight it is near about what should i say uh 8 or 9 not 11 so that is the problem see why would happen the, the light was set for model to have the face straight she tilted the face and this is the output 
these are the fine points that you need to remember while you are clicking because each small fine points if you are talking about salons if you if um, if uh, if i give my example and of course example of say shubhrata who is also here we discuss each and every image during awarding what are the fine points of this image why it should be awarded and why it should not be so remember that the fine tunes of portrait matters now uh, as i was coming to this image i have used hand but it is used in such a way that it is not creating any kind of you know disruption in my view it is, it is actually a semi profile portrait with subtle colors a dark background relief of hair and a certain expression in the subject with a catch light nearly about the um, center nearly to the center or what i say is one o'clock if you consider the eye is there and again if you look at the nail polish of the subject it is not in rich color if it would have been any some rich color or any contrasting color then you have destroyed the image please remember all these matters when you creating when you are creating a portrait this image is of a makeup artist she didn't have any makeup it was just a test image however the image turned out with such a blank look that i decided to keep this image again this image has a uh, uh, catch light at uh, one of the corners of the eye however i do not mind because the expression is so strong as i see it i keep this image again one more low key image and for this image i blended i blended a texture with this image to get this uh, output this is a profile portrait if i go back to uh, if i remember mr shujoy shil uh, asked this question no it is not necessary for the subject to look at your camera this is a profile portrait the subject is looking towards the main light and not towards the camera here the subject is looking straight towards the camera and if you see i have clicked this image from a slightly upper angle just to have a narrowing effect or the oval effect of of a face suddenly due to that the forehead became much wider and uh, with height also it increased if i did click it from a bit below then the forehead would have been small again a profile portrait with catch light exactly at the center of the eye and i have used i used a um, fill light to detail to the flowers not to the rest of the hair if i would have given an uniform light for the flowers as well as the hair then it would have diverted my attention ha ha chotirmay chotopadhyay jiggesh korchen shul gulo ki sharp kora hoyeche are the hairs sharpened as by chotirmay chotopadhyay no 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 yes no For it is actually i added noise to the image i actually added noise to this image nothing else ja any processing whatever processing that i did or jo karna tha wo maine kiya uske baad i added noise to this image just to give a an aged look or a, a, a texture to the image and as i was coming to this one and with this one as i was saying that i intended light to be uh, i mean highlighting the flowers to a certain extent not the other part of the hair it is not possible to exactly highlight this it's not always rather possible with all the limitations that we have so what i did i went ahead and used a snoot generally we use snoot from the background to highlight the hair rather i used it from the front just to highlight this uh, you know uh, the flowers and if you see if you closely see a bit of the hair above the flower is highlighted and this was a casual shot well this got me psa gold and fiab gold if i remember correctly so i don't mind this is one image from the fib 
indoor portrait workshop that uh, few of us conducted last year. This one, again, with an open mouth, however, I tried to uh, mend the teeth as much as possible by placing a light. And uh, as you can see, the processing, I have an added uh, texture to the background. Same subject. This is again from the last shoot that I did. Again, if you see the subtle light highlighting the contour of the subject, I do not I mean, I, I use harsh light as here, like to you know identify the contour of the subject. I concentrate mainly on the expression of the subject so that I do not have to divert my attention to all the other things. So the setting of light should be such that highlights and shadows should blend in such a way that the shadow and highlight portion does not have a very distinctive difference. It should blend very, very slowly. Okay, so and I have some root study as well. This is again one of my uh, older works. It was done in 2014, I believe. This one, I believe, again, three years, or two, two years or three years back. This is one of um, more uh, rather last year I did one this one I mean uh, a, a part of a uh, part of last year's show this one uh, if you if you consider this image and you see highlights on either side of uh, of the legs on the two legs if you, if you are doing more study then you need to have an uniform like I mean it's not hard and fast that you should have the same light but ideally you should have such a light that it should have an uniform output. If you look at the neck of the subject, you would see the lights are placed in such a way that it forms a shadow just in between. Again, one of my old works, nothing new. Again, old. This one is one of uh, the images from last to last year, if I remember correctly. You must have in your mind or you should pre-visualize what you want to do. New study doesn't mean that you have to show everything. It means that you need to highlight the shapes, accentuate the shapes and the contour of the subject. This one is again one old image and I did blend a texture with this. Again, a texture blended with this image. Old one from 2016, I believe, this one. May I ask you a question? Huh? May I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, Noor study, is it all about a shape or a light structure or expression or the combination of both? I would say it's a combination of your artistic views along with the um, either with the contours of the subject or with the uh, highlight you want to just a moment just a moment please yeah whatever you want to project it, it may have an expression the subject may have an expression like the one with this one it does the subject does have an expression and the expression which is quite which is called, uh, rather it goes with the image and uh, regarding figure and nude study, I mean, to me there is a difference in nudes simply work with nudes and in figure study you work with uh, with the highlights and shadows and shapes and textures. Okay, okay, okay. This image, I'll stop at this image to have a discussion because let uh, recently I've come across someone trying this image, however, they did try but they couldn't execute. 
the shadow that you see or the reflection rather not shadow the reflection that you see uh, uh, beneath the subject is actually in camera it is not created in photoshop simply a black acrylic the subject was sitting on it and this was click straighten remember the understand the, the concept of this image was monk or pray or prayer so the hands or the palm of, of the hands are important in this image so the hands of the palms are used in hi the highlights of the palms are used the the veil is used to showcase that we may be the, 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 the thing that I'm trying to say is the veil is used the veil might not have been used the veil is used in such a way that the calmness of the prayer is and the presence of red the color red is just a juxtaposition so if you are using a veil or any specific color on your image on your subject remember that each color represents something so keep those in mind while you are using colors on your subject Again, this one is uh, straight. The reflection is in camera, not created in Photoshop. Earlier, he used to do that in Photoshop, but then I realized that I need to create it straight in the camera. Uh, as I was saying, that there is no uh, harsh. I mean, there is no harm in admitting that previously I used to create these shadows in Photoshop, but later I realized that uh, if I claim to have this as my specialization. So it's better for me to try and achieve this when I'm clicking. Why? The reason is simple. I do not spend much time in post processing. Trust me when I say this. I Ashoka have seen that. Well, I have conducted classes in South Kolkata Photogenic. I spend most at the most I spend uh, three to four minutes to process an image. Not more than that. Okay. This one is again from the uh, earlier set. Now, the speciality of this subject is uh, her eyes, eyeballs. These are actually what you see. It's not Photoshop. The, her eyeballs and color are like this. Now, I use the rose just in contrast with that and the look and the wild looks that she has given. A fan was used to, you know, help me fly those ears. And the way she is holding on to the rose, it gives me an impression of wild yet calm approach of a portrait, a nude art portrait. You may consider it as a nude study, you may consider it as a nude portrait, whatever you wish. Can anyone, right now, anyone please, I don't want everyone to answer, if anyone can, there is uh, an issue with this image due to which I have not finalized this image. Can anyone identify that, please? Anyone? Any anything? You, what comes to your mind? Okay, fine. I'll not wait. I'll proceed. If you look at the nail polish, I have not. It skipped my attention to finish that. Okay. The nail polish would not complete. <laughs> So this is the my these are the minute points that you need to keep in mind. When your image it makes it to the top, and when it is judged for awards, all these small small points are looked into. That is disturbing, indeed. Yes, it is. Once you see it, it becomes more disturbing. Yeah, Rajdita Ajay here. Just one question. Yes, Ajay. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, if, if you go to the image, uh, the last image, yes. So uh, I would just like to know, maybe for a few of the images, not all images, otherwise it will definitely take time. That is, can you tell what was the light setup you used just for our understanding? Okay, one. And what are the do's and don'ts of doing the light setup? Okay, Ajay, let, let, let's do the discussion on this. Uh, how can you identify the light? That you can only identify the light's light position. Do you see the shadow of, of our left hand? 
Yes. Yeah. And so there. From the shadow of all that, man, can you identify where the main light was position? Main light was position. Uh, four o'clock model. Do not care about four o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. I don't. I don't go by degrees. It's simply on the left hand side of the model from a higher position. Why higher position? Because uh, the hand is creating an obstruction and the shadow is falling on her on her body. That's how I uh, identified the light. And if you see, there is there are there is uh, detail in in the shadow area. And for that, fill light. Uh, just uh, hitting from the reflector was used from the right hand side of the subject. And as I said before, a fan was used and one snoot was used, which was hitting the background. That's it. Okay. Rajdi, Rajdi, I want. This was the light setup and. Yes. Oh, okay, please. Please, please, please. please. Uh, Again, this is an old image. In the previous image, yes. in the previous image, uh, yes. I want to ask you a question. The shadow which is casted from the left arm, the shadow uh -huh. casted after the left arm, is it is it not negative? The shadow, the shadow. Okay. I, I, I understand if you feel a bit, I appreciate the feedback, but let me tell you one thing, as I was discussing a while back, photography or the, uh, the presence of uh, light cannot be identified unless and until we have shadows. I could have easily got rid of the shadows by using another light just to soften the shadow or by editing to mix the, if you can see, the side of our hip. And the dark portion, I could have easily bend it. However, I, why I chose not to do that is because now when I'm telling you to look at the image carefully at her nails, now you're seeing this. Generally, what people do is they cut the image just below the hand. Right. Now, right. I, why I kept, and, and let me answer the question why I kept the shadow? Yeah. I kept the shadow because that is demanded in this image. Okay. And you can ask me why do you think that it, uh, the shadow that is demanded in this image? My answer would be, if the shadow is not there, then uh, just beneath her, uh, beneath her hand, then her hand would also not be in shadows. Half of her hand would also not be in shadows if the shadow is not there just beneath her hand. So if I use, try to, you know, uh, place another light just to counter the shadow, it would have been a flat image. Just visual, just try to visualize the image. It would have been flat, and it would not have this kind of appeal that you see right now with light and shape. Okay. 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 This again is an old image. Again, uh, can anyone identify one issue with this image? I think the ring or something on the female's hand. Yes, exactly. See, when you start looking at an image with minute eyes, you tend to find the small imperfections. That the ring which is there, it, it could have been easily removed by me, but that skipped my attention. So, if this image would have been there for award judging. Then, if such kind of a juror was there, then it would have been discarded. As simple as that. And regarding this, um, two lights were used, two uh, soft boxes, or rather, somebody else is getting a problem. Okay, let's go to the next one. I think last year's. Last year's, yeah, last year's show. Uh, on geometrical patterns. This one as well.
Rajiv, the, the uh, earlier uh, image, Ajay here, the earlier image, did you do it on glass? No, no, it's, it, it is uh, simple acrylic. Okay, simple acrylic. Huh? Yeah, yeah, simple um, transparent the, acrylic. Okay, and the background was blended or when you shot it was white? No, 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 no. I have kept separate light for the background to highlight the background. Okay. If you carefully look, there will be details in the background. Okay. Uh, let me uh, discuss with this image because this is one of the images which I find my own creation, which is nearly have a perfect line. If you see the highlight and shadow on each side of her hip and the legs and the hand and the shoulder and the ears, it's, I would say, nearly to the symmetry. It is fantastic. Fantastic. It is nothing rocket science two soft boxes on either side of the subject, a bit from the back, hitting to the subject and creating like a triangle. That's it. Simple. And Rajdeep, how, how, how the light casted on the fingers? On yes. The fingers. Yeah, yeah. On the fingers. Why? If the light was not there on the fingers, then it would have been without any detail then this would have been the, the the balance of the image would have been gone. Okay. So it's very important to see each and every light, where it's casting shadow, where the highlight portions are. These are very important. Well, you can easily say that I could have, with a single click of uh, of a mouse, I could have I could have got rid of the what should I say the nose of the subject. Now, when I am saying you, you are looking at the nose. I know. I could have done that, but that would have been unnatural. It's human. It's not a doll that I can just simply cut apart. Okay, I believe. Yeah, that was the last image. That uh, marks the uh, end of the presentation and uh, the images that I shared with all of you. And uh, if you have any questions that uh, Ashokta must have forward to me also the new forward me any question let me just go through how to make indoor model shoot into a creative image Tanushri, uh, that is a very uh, what should i say generic or a very uh, generic question i would say why Tanushri, Mitra, they are whatever creative wish to create hello, hello. Tonusri Mitro, Tonusri, are you there? Nonetheless, if the question is uh, okay. after. Okay, uh, let me tell you that if you have a creative uh, concept in your mind, what you need to do is just uh, cut the subject or blend your uh, creative output with your uh, image. That's it. I would like to know about editing the indoor model image. I will have already told you that. Devashish Pai, how can I set two lights for based portrait? Based high key portrait, based light, the single light portrait, once from those side lights of a portrait. One portrait and model in Matha borrowed to be Khomta Thake, the one lights at a Kikura Habe, clean without shadow photo Habe, okay. Portrait at the focus for Habe, okay. Let me answer a few. Devashish um, Babu, there is only one son, Kurjo Akhtai. So, what we do is we modify sunlight according to our creative uh, wish and use that for portraits. Likewise, forget about two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten lights. When you have one single light source, you can do wonders with that. So please, again, I'm telling you, there is no hard and fast rule that you need to place your light here and there. It's entirely depending on your subject, her facial issue, uh, how she, uh, her, her skin texture, how fair or dark she is, all these things. Ike portrait. 
Doki portrait. These are very. Uh, thank you, Shubhroto Kumar Dasba. Okay, high key portrait, low key portrait. What do you understand by high key and low key? Simple. In low key, you have the low tones or the gray tones, and in high key, you have the white and uh, and the and the and the gray part of the white tones mostly. These are the only two differences. Rather than asking about low key and high key portraits, please, my advice would be please concentrate on your subject and his or her expressions. Just see that based on that, you decide whether you want to do a low key setup or a high key setup. Okay, this is again a very interesting question. If you are using a hat or something on 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 your subject. Uh, how would you set the light? Again, Devaji, I would tell you that once you are setting the light, you are setting it for the subject. As long as you remember that her eyes, her face is properly illuminated. For that, if you need to lower the light, do that. If you need to, for that, if you want to increase, if you have to adjust or increase the height of the light, do that. As simple as that. It's not the props that you are setting the light for. It's the subject for which you are setting the light. Okay. Or if you are using flash inside your home, can you get the same out? If you are using flash in your home, I, you have not mentioned whether it's in-camera flash or um, or an external flash. If you are using an external flash. You can bounce the flash in many angles and use it to your creative uh, thoughts. You may use it directly. You may use it from the left or the right, or you may use your uh, use your uh, on-camera flash as the main flash and keep your external flash on the side of the subject as a as a um, slave. And what you do is simply you put. Uh, what should I say? A handkerchief in front of the uh, pop of flash, fire it, and then see the output. Well, if you're looking for an output of uh, output that an LM from 800 would produce with a flash, definitely that would not be the same. But you will have uh, the light and shadow effect. No problem with that. You can use your external flash for that. Okay. What else? Okay, where do you focus? Always in the nearest eye. Always in the nearest eye. Please do not use autofocus set by camera so that it can focus. Camera generally focuses on either the contrasting part or the, the edges. So please put it on single focus mode, select it to the nearest eye of the subject, and then click the image. Otherwise, if the if the what camera and lens do you use for general for okay I'll answer that question later okay if you if the if the focus is if the focus falls on on the on the neck or or on the cheeks you would see the eye and the lips all these are generally obscured to a certain extent it does not have that focus which you need or which you want it so always focus on the nearest eye. Okay, what else? Focus. Which level you want to click portrait? I have already discussed that. It depends on your subject. Her, her, her is eyes, nose, cheekbones, the width of the face, height of the face, height of the forehead. Everything you need to consider while you are setting up the light. If you are uh, clicking it from the lower level. If the subject has a short nose, it would look shorter. If the subject has a long nose, it would look normal. That's the difference with one example. Okay, and I have one question from Shujaida as well. What camera and lens I use? Shujaida, I, uh, uh, I have a D7100, Nikon D7100 um, camera, D90. And, uh, I also use 7100 as well. Yes, you do. And uh, 
my friends some of my friends uh, friends and well wishers are kind enough to share their uh, master equipments with me sometimes like in the likes of d850 or d750 <laughs> and all these things so they are kind enough to let me use their equipment sometimes and i use those as well that's what i use and for editing i simply use camera raw and a bit of photoshop that's it so that's uh, the end of my presentation and uh, hope you have the the time that you've invested today i hope you have uh, you are you are taking something back with you and uh, if you feel that you have queries or query regarding any specific thing you can always refer that to ashok gupta and i'll get back to you on that ashok gupta uh, you may take it from here please i can't uh, uh, use any word uh, to give you thank you <laughs> rasdi uh, is a very difficult subject is a very technical subject as well as very much artistic uh, materials are attached with it with all these technical know hows very difficult to tackle it with uh, webinars but you tackled it very fantastically uh, we already started getting feedbacks from participants uh, so kind of you all the uh, dear participants and uh, we are now uh, at the end of our program one more thing i'm sorry to interrupt you uh, i would like to say one more thing yeah uh, portrait is a is a vast subject and uh, I have uh, I have been asked one question by many many people that why did I choose portrait as my area? Well, I like portraits a lot, and it's something that portrait is a it's a huge subject. And if I am going into each and every aspect of portraiture, there are different things that you need to take into account: subjective portrait, objective portrait, characteristic portrait, characteristic and creative portrait. you know and uh, even portraits and uh, what not so if if i go into all this technicality it, it it jumbles up in your brain so if you find um, interesting portraiture start off with the history of photography and how portraits evolved trust me when you go to that you will find various aspects of portraiture which we generally do not practice today so please remember if you are into portraits if you are practicing portraiture or portraits please uh, deal with each subject in unique manner because each and every subject responds to your communication in a different way so that's all for me and ashok da you may carry on i'll just mute myself now okay uh, we don't want to uh, take more times because it is almost dinner time for all thank you everyone for participation thank you everyone to hold your hands with us and uh, we promise that in coming days we shall be presenting more some interesting uh, topics in webinars please uh, stay with us please visit our website and uh, we want to show our great great thanks to rajdeep he did thank you so much for everyone for your tremendous job for your time and, and patience i'm just leaving the meeting now it's always already time for me for for dinner as well Hello. so wish you all have a safe passage in this crucial time stay safe bye bye okay thank you rasip and good night everybody stay safe stay well good night and stay with thank you, you.